Good afternoon, YouTubers. Welcome back in to another edition of Astro's Recap. David Artis here, once again, here to break things down for you. Just had an update there on my phone, so just looking very quickly there. A few things I want to do today. By the way, happy opening day. It is Thursday, March 30th. It's officially 2.35 p.m., so I'm going to try to get this video up here shortly. That way, my few subscribers can actually listen to it before... The Astros play tonight at 6. So, yes. Um, but a few things I want to do today. Uh, one is I want to break down the Astros roster, 26-man. Officially official this morning, I saw. And then also sort of get into my predictions, which is one thing I really didn't do. I think I did this last year, but I haven't done it yet this year. But I'm off today, and it's opening day, and I got time here. So... Good time to actually do it right when the season starts here. So anyway, again, happy opening day. Uh, there's a few games going on right now. Uh, I know the Yankees are beating the Giants 5-0. That's the game that's been on, at least, uh, the MLB Network. I've been watching some of that. But um, anyway, so a few surprises with the Astros roster, which I'll get into here. Um, I haven't really thought about this. So I'm going to go through, just thinking out loud here, the 26 guys that I'm aware of that are actually on the team. And if I get to 26, then we'll know that's the 26. I might struggle with the bullpen a little bit just because I feel like there's one or two guys in the bullpen that always slip my mind. So we'll, we'll, we'll try and do this. I know they're carrying three catchers. And those three catchers, obviously, Martin Maldonado, um, Yanir Diaz, will be their backup catcher. And then you'd think Corey Lee, but actually, no. It's actually Cesar Salazar is their third catcher. Corey Lee did not make the team. Um, the reason he didn't make the team is because, well, uh, if anybody that knows Dusty Baker um, or the Astros front office, uh, they had this love affair with Martin Maldonado where he'll catch 95% of games at least. And, I mean, that was evident even last year because Christian Vasquez, who's a superior catcher, uh, definitely from the offensive standpoint, barely caught any games last year. Um, like, you make the trade for him, and you really don't even play him. So, but they had this love affair. And, you know, the thing with, uh, I, I know I'm sort of getting off track here. I want to get back on the roster here. But just real quickly, with Martin Maldonado, okay, I'm – when the Astros have made the move for him, so his first year, first stint with the Astros, I believe it was 2018, when they, they brought him over. It was a deadline acquisition, I believe. Just trying to think here out loud a little bit. 2018, I think, and they didn't re-sign him. So he had a stint with sort of the, I want to say the Royals and the Cubs. They got him back in 19. So was it the next year, I think? I'm pretty sure 19 they got him back. Because that was the same year they, they got Granky at the deadline. But they brought in Maldi. So they only really, they really didn't have him for like, I mean, they didn't re-sign him after 18. So he went to the Cubs, or he went to the Royals first, and then the Cubs, and then back with the Astros. So, But when they made the move for him initially, I liked it. Everything was fine. I, I, I preferred him over Robinson Chirinos. Because Chirinos was not a great hitter. Now, Maldi's not either, but Maldi at least hit 200. And that's all I'm asking for. So, you know, new season, clean slate for everybody. I try to start off fresh, new season, things, you know, that happened last year. It's in the past. Let's forget about it. So, for me, for Maldi, I'll give him to the end of April. If, he can't hit, if, he can, if he's not hitting 200 by the end of April, then I'm off on him again. But he's going to catch. And that's just the way it is. I don't understand the love affair with Dusty, and I don't understand the love affair with all these Astros fans because how can you support a batter that hits 140 in the lineup? Granted, he hits ninth. He's actually hit eighth today. The lineup's already been announced. He's hitting eighth. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. But uh, Maldi, just give me the 200, man, please. Uh, I, I mean, that's all I'm asking for. For anybody else, 200 would not be acceptable. But for you, if you get the 200, that's all I'm asking for. So, anyway, three catchers. So, yeah, Moldy, Diaz, and Salazar. Um, I don't think you'll see a whole lot of Salazar unless something catastrophic happens. He might get a few at-bats here and there. 
uh, pinch hitting wise. I, I don't know. Apparently he hit well in triple A, so there's that. But um, so your three catchers, first baseman, obviously um, Jose Abreu. You have um, obviously no Altuve. So your second base, thinking of a platoon here, uh, Mauricio Dubon, who can't hit either, and David Hensley, where we don't know yet. So that's six there. A shortstop, obviously, to Jeremy Pena. And third base, Alex Bregman. So I got to eight just with that. Catchers and your infielders. Uh, I go to the outfield. Uh, have um, Alvarez on the left. You'll platoon Myers and McCormick in center. Tucker in right. So that's now 12. Uh, Corey Jolks, the other guy that um, apparently I, I felt like I didn't keep up with spring training at all this year. Really, because, you know, with the Astros, it really doesn't matter a whole lot as long as your guys, like, you know who's making the team as long as they stay healthy. So, yeah, McCord Jolks would make 13. I'm trying to think if there's anybody else I'm missing. And I would assume there is, but um, 26 man roster, you got 13 position players, 13 pitchers. Um, but we'll stick with the 13. Now, I'm going to look at this just to make sure I get the, like, I'll have the full. Whoever I leave out here, I'll get to. So, But think five starters. Obviously, we know those guys. Framber Valdez makes 14. Um, Javier, 15. Urquidy, 16. Garcia, 17. And Hunter Brown is on this team, 18. So, 18 relievers. Obviously, we'll go reverse here. So, your closer is Ryan Presley. I mean, you got three setup guys, essentially, with Hector Neris, Rafael Montero, and Brian Abreu. So I'm at 22 now. Phil Maton is there. And here's where things get a little little iffy. Phil Maton is there. <laughs> let's see. Let's see. Let's see. So I got the 23. I'm missing three guys. If I sat here for five minutes, I think I could come up with at least one more reliever. Uh, they, they're they going without a lefty. I do know that. There was talk about Ronel Blanco being on this roster. I don't know if he made it. We'll have to find out here in a second. But, um, yeah, you know, it, it sometimes takes a little bit just because, just because we don't know. I'm going to pull up my app here because I, I, I got to find this out here. So, um, I have to poke around here a little bit, so I apologize. So I try to find this Astros news. Where are our, where is our roster here? So if I scroll across here. All right, I found it, I think. Uh, let's see. Scroll down here. Yeah, I got the outfielders. Set Hensley. Got the starters. Here's the relievers. All right. Ryan Stanek. So that would make 23. Um, Seth Martinez. That's 24. And Ronel Blanco did make the team. So there's 25. Still missing one guy. I said... Presley, I said Montero, I said Abreu, I said Neris. Um, who am I forgetting? If there's a 26th guy that I did not say here. Um, who did I forget? I want to say I forgot another outfielder, but I said, you know, DH... I said Mauricio Dubon. Yeah, I said... For some reason, I felt like I said 20... Now, let's do this again just quickly. All right, so your three catchers, we said Maldi, Diaz, Salazar, Abreu, Dubon, Hensley, Pena, Bregman, Alvarez, McCormick, Myers, Tucker, 
five starters. So that's one, two, three, four, five. That's 17. And is there six relievers? Because if there's six, I'm forgetting something. I just don't know what. What am I forgetting? Because there, there's eight. No, eight. So if there's eight relievers. All right. Sorry. <laughs> Give me one more chance here. All right. Three catchers. First baseman. Two second baseman. Shortstop. Third baseman. McCormick, Myers, Tucker, Alvarez. It's 12. Five starters. That's 17. Plus eight. Eight relievers would make 25, wouldn't it? That would make 25. I don't know what I'm missing here. Eight. Plus five. Plus two. Let me see, 8 plus 5, that's 13, plus 2, that's 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. No. All right, 3, <laughs> sorry. So i got to read this here, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 18 plus 8, that would be 26, right? ATS. God, I just don't know who I'm missing. I got the 22 on my own, but I forgot Ryan Stanek, Seth Martinez, and Renel Blanco. Or the three guys I missed, which would be 25. I don't know who else I'm missing here. I mean, I said there are five starters. I'm not going to go crazy about this. Corey Jolks. I didn't say him, right? So I said him initially, but I didn't say him at the end. So that was... Let's do this again. Three catchers. Abreu. Dubon Hensley. Pena. Bregman. Jolks, Alvarez, McCormick, Myers, Tucker, Fromber, Javier, Christian, Urquidy, Garcia, Brown, that's 18 plus 8, yes, that would be 26, the 8 relievers. So the three guys I didn't name, which was Blanco, Renel Blanco, Ryan Stanick, and Seth Martinez, along with Presley, Neris, Montero, Abreu, Maton. Right? That should be 26. I don't know why I came up with 28. Anyway, I sort of covered it all there. That's your story. That's your um, um, 26 man roster or 26. Well, I, I, I named 26 guys at least at some point there in the last five, six, seven, eight minutes, whatever it was. All right, I'm not going to go crazy here, but yeah, that was not as smooth as it could have been. So, anyway, a lineup today, real quick here. Um, well, interesting. So, Pena is going to be leading off, at least getting the chance to, with no, uh, it's unfortunate that, you know, Altuve, Brantley are not, you know, with us yet. I have no update on. Michael Brantley, which is strange. You'd feel like there there'd be should be some news on Brantley, but I just feel like there's nothing. So I have no idea what to think there. I don't I don't know why the Astros he re-signed him and he's still not healthy from whatever he was dealing with last year. So I don't know. I have not heard a word on Michael Brantley. Um, with the thing with Altuve, we know he's just injured until whatever it's going to be. I mean, June, I guess we're looking at. So, yeah. And these injuries, when you go into the season with people in the IL, I feel like it always takes longer because once they are healed with whatever they're dealing with, and then they have to sort of rehab like assignments. They got they like they, they didn't have a spring training, so these people would take longer because they're not just going to force them right into game action once they're healed. They have to go out on rehab assignments. It's a little different, I feel like, uh, during the regular season. But when you don't start the season, you have to get some work done So to get back into game shape. So 
yeah, I just think they take they take a little, little bit longer. So, but as I uh, move forward, uh, predictions wise, I've I've sort of thought about this mainly. I should have came in more prepared with the roster. That way, it would have been a little bit more smooth there. But I uh, messed up a, a a few different times there. But I've thought about this uh, at least from the American League side of things. So, obviously, um, I got the Astros winning the West, and I got actually so. People might not agree. I think Toronto wins the East. I think they're loaded. I think they're stacked. They sort of got to the playoffs last year, then they sort of flamed out against the Mariners, but I think they're the team to beat in the AL East, that is. So I actually have the Yankees not finishing. I have the Yankees finishing second in that division. And I'll also throw the Rays into the wild card mix. So Yankee, I got three teams in that division making it. I don't think Baltimore or Boston really sniffed the playoffs. Baltimore had a good season last year. They might actually sort of fall back. Usually, I've said this in the past, but teams that overachieve, usually following the overachievement, will fall back a little bit. So I could see Baltimore finishing under 500. Um, I don't know, but we'll, we'll wait and see there. And Boston, I just don't think they have the, enough talent to to really get them very far. So, And, I mean, that was the sort of the case last year. And Tampa Bay... You look at the team on paper, never looks, you know, that scary. But for some reason, they find a way to make it work. So why would this year be any different there? Uh, but the Astros winning. I have the Mariners also making a wild card spot. So your three wild card teams will be the Yankees. No particular order here, but the Yankees, the Rays, and the Mariners will be the three wild card teams. Uh, the Central is the hardest one to pick. And I don't think any of these teams are... Very good. I mean, I think this is probably the easiest uh, division to win. Um, I mean, and it's a hard one to pick. So, you know, the Guardians won last year, so I think that might be the easy pick. But you'd expect the White Sox to be better after, you know, underachieving last year. So, you know, the White Sox are an option. Uh, obviously, Kansas City. You know, even Minnesota stayed in the race most of last year as well. But Kansas City and Detroit, they, they're... they They'll be fourth and fifth place. But, you know, I look at those three teams. I don't think Minnesota's good enough, so it would come down to the Guardians and the White Sox, and that can flip back and forth. Um, man, you know, I want to say White Sox. I just don't know. I just, I really do not know. You know? And the White Sox were good in 2021. They were not good last year for some weird reason. A lot of things didn't work out. Now they did do they did deal with injuries last year, so I think that might be part of it. But I'll I'll go ahead and say the White Sox slightly over the Guardians, and I'm going to change because I actually had the Guardians I think most of the week, and then I just switched now. So I'll put that on the record. I'll take the White Sox here to win that division because I think it's very hard to just pick the same teams that won last year because it's never it never ends up being the case there. So National League, as I switched there, haven't really thought about this a whole lot. So when it comes to the National League here, if you, let's see here. Um, the Central again, so I just thought, thinking of this, Central is going to be an easy division as well. So the two Centrals, AL and NL, I think are the easiest divisions because nobody stands out as, you know, real good teams there. I mean, I think the winner of these divisions can easily win anywhere from 85 to 90 games and easily get in as the division winner there because the Cardinals are okay and they're probably the team that wins that division, Central. I mean, they still got Arenado and Goldschmidt, so... Yeah, that, they didn't make any... Well, Wilson Contreras was their big off offseason acquisition, so... Obviously, Yadier, Yadier Molina retiring, but uh, Contreras will definitely help them offensively. Um, so I'd probably pick the Cardinals just as default. I mean, the Brewers were the team there for a few years. They fell flat on their – well, they weren't terrible last year, but they certainly had a chance and didn't take advantage of things last year. Um, so I'd probably pick the Cardinals in the Central – uh, in the West, I'm actually going to go Padres. I think they're a little bit better uh, than the Dodgers. I, I just do. I mean, it might be crazy because I'm not picking the Yankees or the Dodgers to win their divisions, but I just think that there's teams that are slightly better. 
Uh, the Dodgers will obviously make the postseason as a wild card team. It will hold off the Rockies, D backs. Who's the other team in that division? I'm forgetting. Rockies, Diamondbacks, Padres, Dodgers. <sighs> Feel stupid when I can't think of just easy things like that. So, but sometimes you know you get so much going on, it's hard to. The Giants, who are actually playing right now, so yeah, I don't, I don't expect the Giants to do a whole lot. So yeah, mm. yeah. 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 But yeah, I'll pick, uh, yeah. So I will have St. Louis winning the Central. I'm going to pick the Padres. Certainly the Dodgers will make the playoffs. Yeah, a lot of this is the, very similar. I talked about the Centrals in both divisions, but I'm going to pick three three teams. In terms of seeding, not seeding, but the playoff teams, like the East and the AL, I'll have three teams. I'll pick three teams here. Uh, East A, uh, NL and two teams in the West. So, yeah, uh, Padres, Dodgers, and then the East. This is where it gets tough because there's, well, there's three teams, and those three teams will, i got to pick the division winner. So Miami and Washington won't be a factor, but Atlanta, uh, New York, Mets, and uh, Philadelphia will be the three playoff teams. So who wins the division there? <laughs> You know, the Mets had it all year last year until the very end. Atlanta took it from them. Hard to go against Atlanta. You know, the sexy pick is the Mets. Kind of like uh, the Dodgers. You know, the Dodgers are sort of the sexy team. Also, Toronto is sort of the sexy. These are the teams that have the talent, but actually putting it together and translating on the baseball field, that's sort of a different story. So, I'll probably pick Atlanta to win that division. But, man, I want to pick the Mets. I want to pick the Mets, but I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. So Atlanta wins. I think the Mets are close with them. Phillies make the playoffs. But I think the Phillies, sort of like last year, will be sort of the sixth seed because um, I think the Dodgers and the Mets will be close, battling it out there as the uh, fourth and fifth seed wildcard team. So... That's what I'll go with. I'm not going to really get into the playoff matchups because these will be wrong in one way or another. And, you know, I'm not going to give you my entire playoff bracket. But wanted to give you that, obviously, opening day tonight. So I'm super pumped up. Going to do a few more things here. Be ready. Games on ESPN. We'll watch them unveil the 22 World Series banner. This weekend should be fun. There's a lot of, a lot of cool things going on. I haven't decided tomorrow yet. I mean, I do work. The daily tours, but I've been offered to ask to stay for pregame tours. Don't know if I'll do that yet. That does, you know, make a long day, so we'll have to wait and see. But anyway, so yeah, trying to think anything else there. I mean, you know, I've got, the spotlight for me this year is going to be on Alex Bregman. I just he needs to be better. It's just that simple. He needs to be better. So, um, you can see a lineup real quick just to give you the lineup here. So, um, Pena will lead off. Bregman's hitting second. There's the spotlight. Alvarez third. Abreu fourth. Tucker fifth. Diaz DHing sixth. I'm curious to see what Yonder Diaz as a DH can do. Yeah, Alvarez, especially with Brantley out, Alvarez will get a lot of starts in the left. And your DH, which would most likely be Brantley if he were healthy, will sort of be mixing around a little bit. I'm glad to see Jake Myers getting the first shot in center field over Chaz McCormick. I think I've made my feelings. Those that have listened in the past know my feelings on Chaz McCormick. Not a big fan. I think Myers has more upside. Maldi obviously starting in Dubon. So need to see more out of Dubon from an offensive standpoint because he was not good last year. I'd like to see Hensley get more of the starts at second base going forward. We'll wait and see. So, uh, you know, one through five, and then it's a big question mark with people like Diaz, Myers. We know Molino can't hit. Just give me the 200 and then Dubon. So, so look at the um, 
White Sox, Tim Anderson's back healthy. Uh, Luis Robert, Andrew Vaughn, Eloy Jimenez, Juan Makata, Andrew Benatendi, Yasmani Grandal, Elvis Andrews, and I do not know who this guy is. <laughs> Romy Gonzalez, their catcher. No, right fielder, sorry. Catcher's Yasmani Grandal. Yeah, you have a pretty solid lineup as well. Dylan Cease, you know, came second in the AL Cy Young Award um, voting last year from Valdez. So, be fun to get back into the game. Uh, one thing I didn't mention here as I wrap things up, I'll wrap things up here very briefly. Uh, the pitch clock. Don't have a uh, opinion on it quite yet because I have not watched a whole lot of spring training and I don't know how this turns out. So, Early indications, I don't think I'm going to like it a whole lot just because if I don't watch a three-hour baseball game, I feel like I'm kind of getting ripped off a little bit, but I won't know until I get a week under the, uh, under my belt of watching Astros baseball. So anyway, um, wrap things up there. I went a little longer than I wanted to, but uh, opening day. And again, we're going to be looking at my weekly updates here. I'm, I'm going to have Mondays off, so... Ideally, that would be a day I have more time to do things. But Sunday, if I can't get these out early enough on Monday, I might <clears throat> resort to Sunday. But Sunday is always a late day with work, getting home late, eating, and then just being tired. So, you know, if I can get up early enough on Monday and get these out, you know. But I'm going to try to get this posted here in about 30 minutes, so 3.30, 4-ish. Give you two hours of some content, and then uh, we'll get ready for Astros baseball. So yeah, I'll wrap things up there. Uh, David Ortis, once again, thanks for listening. I'll be keeping you updated every week from here on out. So expect me Sunday, if not Monday, early afternoon-ish. That's what we'll be looking at. So yeah, I'll wrap things up there. And we'll talk to you again very shortly.